Yeah, M just 4 is very much playable in emulator with the right hardware and settings. Thirty gigabytes of uncompressed audio. All right, the beginning is the end. This is Snake visiting Big Boss's grave already. Half of his face burned off already. We don't get to see that side of his face though. And my controllers had just about enough of this. <laughs> you know, hanging there, controller. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of the many things that. things that the characters would never do in their natural character direction and development so far, but everybody takes a 180 in MGS4. Three sixty and walk away. <laughs> Can I explain the greatest of detail why the story could have been better? Well, maybe if I don't know though, because as much as MGS4 is the deconstruction of the series and its characters and its themes, it's perhaps one of the most interesting things in the series as well. MGS4 was heavy on the um, autobiographical aspect of things, with Kojima being neck deep in his midlife crisis, depression, and situation at Konami not wanting to continue. Yeah. But much like Old Snake, Kojima felt an obligation and his responsibility to get it over with, even though everything has gone to shit. Of course it's Big Boss's grave. Snake has no idea who the boss is until um, Eva tells him at the very beginning. Uh, that's, that's, wait, you know, before Act 3. And then at the end, we can see it clearly. A hero forever loyal to the flames of war. Rests in outer heaven. Yeah, that's, the, that's Big Boss. That's what it says on the gravestone. Uh, let's do some shameless new game plus. Did you take your nanos today? All oh, now. And get two free nano packs. <laughs> so all this crazy shit at the beginning <laughs> is supposed to be what it looks like looking through TV channels in the world of MGS4. Right. What is your biggest secret, David? Talk show with David Mark, Hater. You can tell e for us. remake when? Oh well, it's not much of a secret, but I um, uh, 
I have a tattoo of Kobe behind my ear. Tattoos? It's probably not skippable because it's also a clever way to mask the initial loading for the game. It's loading in the background. What are you wearing? I, what do you mean? Why are you here? Is to suffer. Armed force the size of Mexico and Canada's total population. Really, really. Hey, where'd it go? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend keeping these guys as pets. So if I hadn't made it for her sooner. She was mad. Because you know what the food analogies. Women, right? Sure. Uh, well, no, no, I, I was just kidding. Susan is a great. Did he show up already? Maybe he did. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He shows up in this program, but I think we're already past it. For the ceremonial snake cutting. Uh, Very subtle. We need a member of the audience to come on down and test out the chef's new knife. Come on down, chief. Don't be shy. I don't fight, but this guy might. This is the last chapter in this snake's life. Well, thankfully, it's still the last, chronologically speaking. wishes they didn't try. mantis unmanned surveillance systems. Keep still loading for a few seconds after that. changed it's no longer about nations ideologies or ethnicity it's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines war and its consumption of life has become a well-oiled machine war has changed ID tag soldiers carry ID tag weapons, use ID tag gear. Nanomachines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. MGS1, genetic control. MGS2, information control. MGS3, motion control. Battlefield control. Everything is monitored. MGS4, battlefield control. Nanomachines have changed. Changed. The age of deterrence has become the age of control. All in the name of averting catastrophe. <laughs> and you see battle control. <laughs> and he who controls the battlefield controls history. War has changed. When the battlefield is under total control, war becomes routine. No! <laughs> 
Just another day of beating the dead horse of the series. It's more than in-game backseating, it's in-game taking over front seating. Well, maybe Snake didn't know how to murder it. You guys ready for the greatest feature of MGS4? Are you okay? Five seconds in. <laughs> An article starts nagging in your ear. And then, if you still don't do anything, the game will literally play itself with Autocom taking control. Battlefield control. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny as fuck. <laughs> More back seating. Hell, just front seat me, Autocom. There you go. Try going under it. That's that's the game doing that. Medic foreshadowing. Uh, let's pick this up. And equip it. So it. Shows up in the scene here. We can also go two different ways. If you go this way, you get a cool shot of the gecko kicking the puck. And these guys gonna suck. The entirety of this rebel force, all they manage to do is hit one NPC, but one PMC in the shoulder once. That guy. And then they all get shrecked. You idiot. Man, I wish Moobot was still relevant. Made a pr pretty good joke here. Moobots. <laughs> Three Dog still has Moobot, of course. We, we don't have Moobot in OHN, do we, viewer? You know, you would know. Head north and that try not to run nice. into any deck. <laughs> Give me that ammo. You don't know how to use it. Oh my god, the frames.
he got wrecked too. <laughs> but if you know where to aim, you can use any weapon to destroy the geckos, but these guys have no idea. Caddy Wumpus with the tier one sub, thank you. Let's pull Otacon a little bit. The Otacon hasn't been introduced formally yet. So all we get is the philanthropy Snake, logo. The gecko are starting to hunt down the militia. To Those let the world dead, be. You've got to avoid their close range attacks. The exact opposite of what philanthropy was about in MGS2. Raiden asks Snake and Nauticon, what are you and Nauticon fighting for? The future, we had to fight for change. But now, now it's the exact opposite. To let the world be. It's also in the snake's vest right there. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe if we had more than two pixels. This isn't a fight. It's a slaughter. With the firepower they've got, the militia don't stand a chance against the gecko. Be careful not to get dragged down along with them. Stay out of that monster's sight, Snake. Judging from the state of things, I'd say north is your best. North. <laughs> Head north. It's always north. Snake. Head north from. Uh, okay. Let's look around here a little bit more. My PS3 is in orbit. Yes. Nah, not really. The, the super slims don't do that. <laughs> if it was a fat PS3, yeah, it would be in orbit right now. Get wrecked. Oh, I got wrecked too. And I ate the whole ration and some more. Ooh, ammo. Give me that. You only have four rounds? There should be a gecko that appears here. There we go. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, it hurts. We get there. Oh shit. Come on. Unfortunately, the geckos just keep respawning forever, and you can't get rid of them completely. The one here is some cool shit, though. And clums up here. Hello. A grenade. Oh shit. Avoid combat at all costs. I'm not sure what it is. Eventually, this area is kind of die down when all the um, rebels are dead. But sometimes, I don't know, maybe depending on your position or something, it makes them respawn endlessly too. Snake, stop fighting. This might be risky. Oh, 
Let's see if... Oh, you don't have any ammo. Did they calm down? At one point the geckos just start patrolling instead of just slaughtering everyone because there's no one left. But the music still goes crazy with the, the gecko theme. It kind of becomes like a normal sneaking area after a while. I don't hear any more fighting, so maybe... I think that's it now. Okay, calm down music, please. What are you shooting at? There's that guy that I left stunned. Maybe they're gonna kill him. Yep. <laughs> I hear death. Now it's... Yeah, now they're just patrolling around. Nice. Those... Clubs. Can we get this Battlefield ad early? The same one we see later. There you go. But once it's done, and then you start patrolling around, you get the battlefield announcement ad. Announcement slash ad. It tells you that you're retaking control. I wonder, because when you hear this, um, you, usually you also hear this. Most people would only hear this way um, after, in the next couple areas or so, after the cutscene and everything. And that's what triggers the call about it. I wonder if we hear it here. Uh oh, does that mean we can also get the call? Uh, probably not this early. But... Snake, head north. Yeah, no, there's no way we can get it now. But maybe we can still get it before the second announcement. Snake, stay out of that mark. Hey, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, well, there's not much left to do now. But it's a cool detail that eventually it dies down and they take over and they have the announcement. Oh shit! <laughs> Hello. Just kidding. Oh fuck. Alright, alright. GTFO. Here comes 300 IQ Kojima commentary on Snake being formally introduced with his name tag and everything. Just now. I'm gonna pause for a second. And you'll see that for a split second, it actually says Solid Snake at the bottom. Um, 
kind of like behind the text, but then it quickly changes to old. There you go. And Kojima put it this way. If you take the word old and the word solid, and you take out the I and an S from the word solid, it becomes old. And that it is, spells is, you know, I-S. It's snake, snake's being taken away from him. <laughs> if somebody had told me this, I'd be like, okay, you're full of shit. But Kojima himself said it, so I guess he's, he sees it that way. And yeah. Snake's essence of his being is taken away from him, taking away the is from solid into old. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much for all, all the characters. <laughs> the construction of the characters. Yep. Yeah. Three hundred IQ moment from Kojima. Can't wait until I'm old Snake's age playing this game. That'll happen. <laughs> and that's gonna hit hard. Snake is 42 in this game because Kojima is 42 at the time development started. 2005. And like always, Kojima puts himself in the game as Snake in some form, either delivering a message or being bored with life. <laughs> Having his sense of duty to continue to get it over with finish this mess that he started and on the box here I don't know what looking for person we want the camera unfortunately it gets darker when you pause like this on the box one side it says no place to hide on the other side it says no place for Hideo a, a word play on no place to hide um and then there's a link if you look carefully you'll be able to see it a couple times even after the box gets destroyed there's a link to what was kojima's blog on the konami website it's gone now but you can find mirrors you know um it's preserved in some way i think kojima's blog talking about comparing the battlefield to the development situation and work environment at Konami making this game. It would compare that to a battlefield. What with all the... Um, I don't know. It might have something to do with the death threats, burning down his house if you don't make him just four. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you you will find Kojima talking about the development environment, comparing it to a battlefield. So we have this concept of the old, tired, and you know, uh, routine controlled battlefield over and over and over, and that's pretty much how Kojima felt making M just four, just another, you know, beating the dead horse of the series. Controlled battlefield. Controlled, you know, uh, of course, we gotta develop again. Um, when we see. I'll just let this continue. We see the lyrics of the love theme. It'll make a little bit more sense. There it is again, you can see on the side of the box. 
No place for Hideo. What did Kojima mean by this? Except we know, for once. Now in the credits, we're gonna see... Maybe just about now, love theme. There you go. Opening theme, love theme, lyrics by the man himself. And uh, it's in Hebrew, but translated into English, some of these lyrics are very happy. Um, in a flash, I am switched into despair. Everything for the one who lives inside a nightmare. Uh, are, the, are the relevant parts. Uh, wishing for the world that ran out of tears. My heart is already dead. The hope missing you so much it hurts. So now that we know that Kojima compared the development environment to a battlefield, and now we have the love theme lyrics about the battlefield, about you know. The Sparge, yeah, in the battlefield. My heart is already dead. The hope missing is so much it hurts. Everything for the one who lives inside the nightmare. Uh, I think it's safe to assume that Kojima wasn't exactly the, the happy about this. <laughs> but yeah, the famous uh, Simon. I'm not sure which part translates into my heart is already dead. Uh, I live inside a nightmare. Say, man, I, I don't know which part. <laughs> Say, man, but <laughs> those are the lyrics. <laughs> and yeah, written by Kojima himself. And then the box that says no place for Hideo. Uh, shit, maybe we should have played that trailer, but. And the very first trailer for MGS4, which was actually made in MGS3 engine, you know, with the chair race and everything. And you got Kojima gunning down his crew, pretty much. Um, for a brief moment, the director credits say um, Alan Smithy. And Alan Smithy is a pseudonym used by film directors to disown a project to signify that they're unhappy with the final result or with the project and that they did not feel like they had creative control over it. So, um, the whole no place for Hideo thing and Alan Smithy thing plays into that. And my mnemonic, well, it's not really mnemonic, but my trick to remember Alan Smithy is just think of anal smoothie. It's close enough. I don't know what this game is. An anal smoothie. <laughs> Alright, that's just, just my internal lore. <laughs> hey, it works though. You think anal smoothie, Alan Smithy. Oh, okay. That's That's how I remember it. I'm not even kidding, that's legitimately how I remember it. <laughs> MGS4 is weird because it has all these, you know, autobiographical depression, midlife crisis, get it over with, deconstruction of the series things going on with Kojima, so. It's, it's interesting, even though it is the deconstruction of the series. But MGS4 has much going on in the technical department. That's what really makes me appreciate it. Definitely more than than V. Yeah, no. Like I always say, MGS4 is still a professionally made piece of software, even with all those connotations about it that, I, that we always talk about. It doesn't mean that it's an incompetent piece of software, leaked, pre-alpha, bugged nonsense. 
like like Phantom Pain is, yeah. It's just night and day, especially when it comes to to um gameplay details and gunplay and stuff like that. You're literally going from the best gun details in the series in MG4 to the absolute fucking dog shit worst in Phantom Pain. So there's that. As much as MG4 is, again, the construction of the series and the characters and their themes, one thing it does have in common with MG2, although for the most part being a complete opposite of MG2 in those departments, one thing it does have in common with MG2 is that at the time they were trying to see what they could do from a technical standpoint on a new console with a PS2 and PS4, uh, yeah, right, a PS2 and a PS3, respectively. So it kind of shows, it kind of shows that still, um, I guess, level of innovation competence that came with, with a new console. The same cannot be said of Phantom Pain. Holy shit, that is an embarrassment. In fact, they had much bigger ideas for MGS4 at first, but the thing that happened with Sony was that they, they promised that the PS3, especially the dev kit, would be this marvelous thing, and then they got it, and it wasn't nearly as good as... They were told that they had to drop a lot of those ideas, unfortunately. They, they had really, really big ideas, but that happened. <laughs> so they kind of had to limit it a lot. Thousand alerts. Even the no, please. Snake, we've got to go. You've got an old friend waiting for you. Otacon. The test results. Proteo Are you guys out of your fucking mind? Turned up negative. But more on that later. The wrinkled skin, the hardened arteries. Your early aging symptoms look like classic Werner syndrome. But none of the tests were able to pinpoint the cause. So. Well. Judging by how rapidly the aging has progressed, I'd say. Snake. I don't think Let's we'll have time to do 10,000 alerts, guys. It won't make any difference. I'm not an ordinary man to begin with. Not to mention Fox Die. Also, the bits are going to three dogs, so no. <laughs> If we took like, what, 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to get a thousand alerts last time. Yeah, no. It would take three to four hours to get 10,000 alerts. <laughs> well, I'm not a colonel anymore, Snake. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. What are you doing these days? I'm working for an organization under the UN Security Council. The analysis and assessment staff of the PMC Oversight and Inspection Committee. Yeah, I remember the resolution being passed a few years ago. Snake. I Last time we, da we got... Information... 1100 something alerts in 20 minutes. Found him. 
in the middle is just to have three dog be like ah uh, what the fuck at the score screen <laughs> Just because of, we found a way to farm alerts. <laughs> it doesn't mean we should get hit else. Before it's too late. Maybe if I was playing more of this, because three dogs gonna be here in about two and a half hours. We found it. If we could spread it out throughout more of the game, maybe, maybe. He's preparing but, to unleash uh, his insurrection. Liquid. Is lying in wait in the Middle Eastern We're both war old bots now. Track him down. Even the chicken run is what? Five hundred alerts or something? Like <laughs> Oh, there's the clip, yeah. Three dog going, uh one thousand one hundred and fourteen alerts. What? Right. 1114 alert phases. <laughs> nice. 1114 alerts. <laughs> what? what? Oh, it's only 150? Oh, it's 500 kills, I think. Uh, only two eggs today? This must have taken the day off. Seven, eight, nine, I, I thought it was a 500 something for a chicken. As it kills, then yeah. It's much faster to farm alerts than kills, though. Yeah, we're gonna go back for the briefing. So where you see Sony's hands there, that's the beginning of the briefing for Act One. There's a snake. But you don't get to see it in game. What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, uh, AT Corps unmanned bipedal weapons, officially designated Irving by the U.S. military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake? I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. Wait, that wasn't enough cutscenes. We need more. So let's save here. And the only way we can look at that briefing is from the menu. I don't know if they felt that there was too much at the very beginning of the game in terms of cutscenes or what, but of the Act 1 briefing, you only see Sony's hands and the intro at the very beginning. You don't see the whole thing. So if we go here, we get to see the whole thing. And after Sony's hands, the very first line of the briefing, Campbell says something extremely relevant that we always talk about. 
the Manhattan incident triggered a serious public backlash. What is the Manhattan incident? I'm just too. I'm just too triggered a serious public backlash. And now we're here. Two eggs today? Solidus must have taken the day off. Seven, eight, nine, two, five, nine, oh, The Manhattan incident triggered a serious public backlash. Now the U.S. has to think twice before intervening militarily in other countries' affairs. This has fueled a push towards military privatization, with PMCs at the heart of that movement. PMCs? Private military companies? That's right. PMCs have no basis in nations or ideologies. They are private enterprises, driven by profit. In addition to dispatching mercenaries to war zones, they secure weapons and train local soldiers. They're contractors for war itself, and business is good. Their clientele includes developed nations like the U.S., rebel factions looking to seize power by force, smaller countries lacking armies of their own, even terrorist groups. They're in the Americas, Asia, the South Pacific, Europe, Africa, the Middle East. The rise of the PMC has spawned a war by proxy, and it's spreading across the globe. They're... they're... Sonny, we'll eat them later, okay? Every age has its mercenary. These PMCs are nothing new. We've been dealing with them since before the turn of the century. No, Snake. They're nothing like the mercenaries of the past. Ready. Sorry, I'm a little busy right now. The Pentagon's new battlefield control system has produced a decisive difference between hired guns and the PMCs of today. The system was developed by Arms Tech Security. Arms Tech? You mean AT Corp? Yeah. In recent years, AT Corp has shifted focus from weapons development to security tools. And since the establishment of AT Security, business has been booming. The system makes it possible to integrate not only micro-level information on individual soldiers and units, but also macro-level information about field conditions and order of battle. So they finally achieved total real-time battlefield control. That's right. And as a result, the global presence of PMCs has grown. Explosively. Truth is, the rise of system-controlled PMCs has led to a dramatic decline in civilian casualties and human rights violations on the battlefield. A cleaner, safer battlefield. <laughs> Makes for nice propaganda. more. State governments and rebel groups can't match the maintenance price of standing forces. PMCs, by comparison, are reliable, easy to use. It wasn't long before everybody had them on the payroll. And, as a result, Regular armies began to decline worldwide. It's hard to believe I know. 
but PMCs are beginning to overtake conventional armies in terms of scale. Nowadays, it's the PMCs who serve as standard battalions. They already make up 60% of all combatant forces in zones of conflict. 60%? The fact is, the world now depends largely on PMCs for waging its wars. I thought it was the UN that authorized the PMCs in the first place. The US abstained from voting on that resolution. In effect, Washington was endorsing PMCs without ever revealing its true intentions. Until they got wind of the uprising, that is. The US has exported too much military power. And now, she's paying the price. That's exactly it. America has now turned war into a form of economic activity. Analysts are calling it the war economy, in that it's picking up the slack for the downward sloping oil market. But I, for one, don't intend to simply stand by and watch it happen. For the PMCs, market expansion entails fanning the flames of war. It means more refugees. War orphans. Child soldiers. Yes. Even as PMC soldiers get more specialized, they're also getting younger. Mercenaries spun off from state armies. Unmanned weapons. Child soldiers. Proxy battles in a new Cold War. Technically, the Raiden first appears here. Nice. And their numbers are growing. Currently, five of them are big enough to be labeled global powers. Two in the US, and one each in the UK, France, and Russia. Reconnaissance has revealed that those five PMCs are run by a dummy corporation that acts as a single mother company. This mother company embodies the five largest PMCs. Her name is Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven? You mean? That's right. It's Liquid. Liquid? He's taken command of this immense army and is now preparing to unleash an insurrection. I watched him die. His will lives on, in the body of the man once known as Ocelot. He aims to fan the flames of war even higher, to create the perfect world once envisioned by Big Boss. The one world in which soldiers will always have a place. He must be stopped before it's too late. Here comes one of the best features in this game. Snake. Moving around freely during cutscenes as the Mark II or three. Liquids insurrection. You just have everything happening in real time dynamically around you. You can choose look and listen and whatever you want. There's other shit going on in the background. There's a bunch of details in the environment. This is legitimately one of my, my favorite technical features in MGS4. Let's just leave it at that because otherwise I could think of a certain game that could have used this, but whatever. Means. Mostly used to lurk on Sony, yeah, I guess. Isn't that right, Colonel? Got the radio, the PS3, the fat MGS4 PS3. I'm sorry. I know. This isn't just a covert assignment. A higher hit. Wet workshop targeting the head of a major multinational corporation. Get out of the way, Sonny. I wanna go downstairs. Because of the military might of the PMC and the effect they have on the economy, war is to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th, the pillar that supports the global economy. But when Sonny was saying Solidus must have been taking the, must have taken the day off. That's Solidus. <laughs> he doesn't get an egg from Solidus. You can see here. Solidus doesn't have as many eggs. And Sonny's egg memo chart. collapsing to do anything about it. The UN too. Sounds pretty That's sunny stories and books and Snake. he does have normal shoes apparently, she just doesn't wear them. This mission isn't in order from Washington. These are the cannon weapons. Not like the old days. <laughs> and a 
That's not something the UN can officially sanction either. But we can't just look the other way while Liquid plots this insurrection. If we fail to act, he'll become the greatest threat the world has ever faced. There's some sort of what, engine noise here, maybe? Sound design? Real life or real time rendered scenes around the player? Can't do that anymore, sorry. Fine. Let's hear it. Much better. Let's see what Sonny's up to. Yeah, simply don't have the technology. Uh, she's looking at Olga's photograph. Sag. There's the box with the, the noodles and the PSP that she opens later. An enemy toilet. <laughs> He's full for grinding music. Right. A proxy war between hired guns. PMC versus PMC. A quagmire of war. All too typical victims of the new world economy. Snake, you'll be sneaking into the conflict zone via transport truck. Wait, no. This is one of the rebel army's hired operators. There you go. Your first objective is to make contact with our informants. Rat Patrol Team Zero One will be expecting you. Rat Patrol, huh? It sounds sneaky. There are special forces team assigned to the Army's PMC investigation unit, CID. CID? Real the Army? No. I can vouch God damn it, Otacon, get out of the way. This is where Otacon sends her away. And you must not leave behind any evidence of your involvement in the area, let alone that of the UN. <laughs> it's just fucking murder. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep moving. Keep going. Sag. Or at least you can get a face camo. Uh, you can technically get it in this Act 1 briefing, but you have to have a, at least an Act 2 save with the face cam itself. Will you terminate Liquid? I'm not like the PMCs. I don't need your money. Thank you. But if you're going to spark something, spark this. Fine. I'll start my own fire. <laughs> it zooms us on the boobs at the end. Perfect. Alright. Let's continue.
Snake, your first order of business is to rendezvous with the Mark II. Just follow my instructions and use your Octo Camo to make sure the enemy doesn't see you along the way. Really, Otacon? I have to find the Mark II? Then what am I using right now? What is this menu? What does it say on the side there? Metal Gear Mark II. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they couldn't find a solution to this. <laughs> but technically, we don't have the Mark II yet, but we're using the Mark II's menu. Um, I, I don't know. Like, couldn't they just disable the start menu, just have a simple pause screen until you get the Mark II, maybe? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. Octo Camo is a newly developed camouflage technology that's capable of almost exactly mimicking the appearance of objects and surfaces. It's easy to use, too. All you have to do is press up against a wall or object, or lie flat on the ground while wearing the suit. It can be a powerful tool if you use it right. So tell me, how does it feel? Mm, not as itchy as I'd have thought. That suit can mimic the color, pattern, and even the surface texture of walls and floors. Kind of like procuring your own camo on site, right? I do just fine with the regular stuff. I'm not a chameleon. You've got it all wrong. We're not talking about lizards. This is Octo Camo. In other words, it's based on the camouflage capabilities of the octopus. Octopus are sometimes called Ninja of the Sea. They fool their enemies by the mimicking not calls just the octopus color of their ninja. surroundings, but also what? the shape of the terrain. That suit takes its cue from defensive deception found in Otacon and his nerd Besides, friends, maybe. You may not have known this, but there is a snake that can change its body color too. It's called the Kapuas Mud Snake. It's a poisonous reptile indigenous to the Kapuas River on the island of Borneo. Its coloring is normally a reddish brown, but sometimes turns to white. So, snakes can sport disguises too. Hey, what happened to stealth camo? You used to wear it all the time. All that does is create an optical illusion. It's no use against Gecko with their infrared sensors. Octo camo, on the other hand, has micro peltier arrays that regulate the absorption and release of heat harmonizing the wearer's body heat with any background IR radiation. Which means it can offer you at least some camouflage protection against enemy infrared sensors. With so many unmanned weapons in the field these days, I'd expect it to outperform the old stealth camo. But if you start walking or running or making a lot of noise, you'll risk getting spotted by the enemy. And get this! The suit also reduces the weight load on your body and amplifies muscle power. The inside lining sends a weak electric current through your body that stimulates phospholipid production inside your cells, improving circulation. That should make your life gauge recover more rapidly turtle. when you're hurt. <laughs> In other words, Snake, it's a bit of a crutch. You can cut the senior citizen crap, Otacon. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite deliver what they would lead you to believe, what they want you to believe. What with, um... The cutscene that shows the watermelon touching Snake's leg and the camo changing to watermelon only in that part. Or even in one of the famous MGS4 integral podcast episodes where they talk about how you can have all these patterns or if you're in between two patterns then it will change to both. No, that's bullshit. The Octocamo doesn't actually do that. Maybe they had that in mind at first, they were trying to go for that, but it, it just doesn't do that. It only ever has one pattern, which is dictated by where Snake's dick is pointed. So, like, um, if, yeah, here, or here. <laughs> it's still cool, though. It's just the mechanical evolution of playing MGS3 by crawling around everywhere, changing camo every time that the rain changes. Unfortunately, a number of people play MGS3 like that and then hate all the manuing in it. Yeah, no wonder like, you're doing that to yourself. Um, 
But yeah, now it changes it for you. Much better. It just points Snake's dick here. And it changes to that. Point Snake's dick there. And it changes to this. Okay. Still pretty cool. Just not as cool as they would want you to believe. But whatever. Um, let's see. Let's keep going until Arkham talks about the dust bins. His dumpsters is Snake, you know a how that first gun you commercial found term, working? I guess. Well, from what I can tell, it looks like the problem was with the ammo. The ammo? I'm betting it's because they were using cheap local ammunition. The ammo probably triggered abnormal combustion, which excessively raised the pressure and caused the cartridges to stick in the chamber. It's a pretty rare phenomena. I guess you just got lucky. Hmm. More like unlucky. Look on the bright side. It means there weren't any problems with the gun itself. I don't think it'll happen again. Otacon, those two-legged machines, they're not like the Metal Gears I'm used to dealing with. Right. Strictly speaking, though, they're not Metal Gears. What are you talking about? The Gears you fought before were all basically designed and produced to serve as nuclear platforms. Ray was an exception to the rule. But even that was an anti-Metal Gear weapon designed to defeat the Metal Gear clones popping up all over the world. Its value was still measured in terms of the framework of nuclear strategy. It's been 25 years since the end of the Cold War. We live in a world of regional conflict and asymmetric warfare, and it's getting worse every year. The age of the war economy is upon us. The value of Metal Gear as a weapon, the very concept itself has changed with the times. You might even say it's evolved. Nowadays, a Metal Gear needs to be more than a nuclear attack platform. It needs to be adaptable, well-suited to fight in large numbers, traverse urban settings, and work alongside infantry. The Gecko were the answer. There are different types of Gecko designed for different missions, and not all of them are equipped with nuclear capabilities, so technically, they're not Metal Gears. Of course, there are still some of the old Metal Gears around, their primary job is to launch nuclear strikes. But these days, Gecko are the first name in bipedal war machines. They may have gotten smaller, but they're as ferocious as ever. Whatever you do, don't underestimate them. Don't worry. I wasn't planning on it. Snake, that circle that appears around your body is called a threat ring. It's a visual display of the sense you get from entities all around you. When you're crouching, or lying down, and concentrating, it forms a perfect circle. Your sense is represented as waves. The stronger the sense, the greater the wave. Hostile entities are displayed as colors. Get acquainted. It'll save your life. Oh, and one more thing. Your senses will suffer when your sight gets low. The ring will reflect that, too. Keep it in mind, okay? Little underappreciated feature the threat ring you can see little waves there because there's enemies around this building in that direction of all things the threat ring makes a comeback in survive metal gear survive as the threat ring more advanced version of it if somebody was asking about the map earlier my autocon asks you to check your map there, there's a full-fledged map here. Also, largely ignored, I guess, because we know where to go most of the time. So, um, but there, there is a map here. And you have all sorts of controls for it. Man, I don't even use these. It's always heading north. Yeah, uh, mostly. Oh, nice. It goes 3D, too. Wow. That's actually kind of cool. I, I, I had completely forgotten about that. How the fuck do I move it around? Oh, I guess you can't move it while it's 3D. You can move it while it's 2D. Ah. Uh, okay. Hey, at least you can zoom in and rotate it around. Yeah, imagine having a map like this on the iDroid. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see what else the controls say. 
Uh, scroll, zoom in, zoom out, change focus, change angle. Damn, this stupid thing disappears every time you press something. And then we have wind direction as a stat in this game. That's what the arrow shows. So when you're in gameplay, your your compass shows several things. It shows the north direction, shows the direction of your goal, and it shows the direction of the wind, right where your your camo index is. And the direction of the wind is relevant in this game to a tiny degree uh, because enemies can smell now. It's relevant during the crying wolf fight where she can smell if you attack from downwind. Um, or rather, she, she can't smell if you're downwind, however that works, I don't know. Um, you have several things like snake cigarettes, the smoke um, will travel in whatever direction, I guess. And if you're if you're close to, if you're too close to enemies, they will smoke, they will smell the smoke and go investigate. And um, the dust bins here, soon we'll, we'll get a call about them. If you spend too much time in there, you start stinking as well. They will also smell that. Um, now we haven't broken off the penis of the statue yet. Don't worry. <laughs> Snake, I'm sure you've noticed the dust bins used for trash collection in that area. I'll bet they're big enough to fit inside. It could come in handy if you need to stay out of sight until the coast is clear. To get inside a dust bin, stand in front of it and press the action button. Stand in front of it. Press the action button. Got it. Once you're inside, tilt the six-axis wireless controller to sneak a peek outside. You can also launch a first-person attack that way. When you're ready to get out, press the action button again. Snake, I know you already know this, but there's no point in hiding if the enemy sees you doing it. Make sure no one's watching. As soon as we get inside here... You will notice that Snake's breasts will start going up from the smell. And we can use a new revolutionary 6-axis PM technology of motion controls to open, slide, certain... It's a piece of shit. I don't know which fucking direction it picks. Just use the D-pad if you want to open them. You can also use the D-pad. It's it's the fucking motion controls are terrible. I don't know it's <laughs> which fucking direction it picks. It's I don't fucking know. But you can use the D-pad to peek out. Just yeah. I'm a talking dumpster. Feed me. Feed me copies of Phantom Paid. Nice. Right, so the snake stress is going up from the smell. How did it go? Did you manage to hide? Yeah, I did like you said. Uh, looks like this is where they dump their household trash. Huh, how can you tell? Because it stinks in here. Bad. Leftovers from last night's dinner, probably. Ooh, leftovers. Mm, and there's some bugs crawling around on my face. Ugh. And it feels like roaches. There's a whole bunch of them scurrying around. Make sure you get the smell of them off you before coming back here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Ugh, seriously, doesn't it make you sick? I'd crawl into a toilet if it kept me out of sight. Huh. Something crawling up my leg. Ugh, I can't even imagine. Ew. You know, you might want to get out of there as soon as the coast is clear. Yeah. Not the best place for a nap. No kidding. Phantom Payment most hated game of all time. Uh, I mean, not when there's twin snakes. But close, it's close. Phantom Pain is the biggest disappointment, and twin snakes is the biggest rage inducing, I think. I don't know necessarily which one is worse, but. Each in their own way, they're at the bottom. <laughs> Whether it's disappointment or rage. So now, even if we got out, 
the stress is still going up. And there's a whole bunch of flies all over Snake. Um, Snake, you've uh, attracted a swarm of flies. I think that odor's really stuck on you. Yep, I stink. The stench must bother you, right? And it can't be good for your mental well-being. Also, the fumes could alert nearby enemies to your presence. Odor carries down wind, so be especially mindful of enemies in that direction. Believe me, I know. I learned all about how deadly smell can be back when I was a scout. Then why not hurry up and find some way to get rid of the smell? Right. Oh, let me just go to Mother Base in my temporary shower unit. Oh, wait. Huh? Snake, I really think you should get rid of that odor you're giving off as soon as possible. I know, but how do I do it? Oh, good question. I don't see any showers around here. That's it. I've got it. All you've got to do is get whatever's causing that smell off your body. <sighs> How? Well, by rolling around on the ground. Rolling around? Right. I remember reading somewhere that horses roll around on the ground to get dirt off their bodies. You should try the same thing. I bet it'll scrape away the source of the stench. You mean like a sand bath? Yeah. It's basically a shower. For horses. Okay. Give it a shot. I'm sure it'll work. Here goes nothing. Showers and horses? Hmm. Alright, if we start rolling around... Notice the stress will... Oops. Start going down. There we go. <laughs> now we're clean. Ish, I guess. This guy have... Yeah, I thought he had a ration for some reason. No? Okay. But there's other factors that influence snakes' stress level. Mainly sunlight. There's smell, and there's sunlight. If you're out in the sunlight, the stress slowly builds up. So every once in a while, you want to... And you want to stick to the shadows anyway, because... That gives you more camo index as well. Like right now, we're 45. See, it goes to 46, 48 because the snake's knee is in the shade. <laughs> it changes down to the exact percentage. Nice. So in the shade, you get 55 like this. And in sunlight, you get 45. Yeah. <laughs> Bisexual. I mean, it makes sense. 25. 85. Um, let's see. Can we get the battlefield ad? Oh, because we technically heard it already. I've got some intel on the PMCs deployed in that area. They're a part of Praying Mantis Corporation, based out of the United Kingdom. It's one of the five largest PMCs in the world. Its business activity includes soldiers for hire, supply and logistics services, education and training for state armies, everything you'd expect. During the Iraq War, Praying Mantis contracted with the US government to send large numbers of its soldiers into combat zones, which is why the local regime opted to hire Praying Mantis, a UK-based company, and not their regular army to fight the rebels for them. They were buying their experience. Snake, I've said it a hundred times already, and I'll say it again. Do not let the enemy see you. Really? If the enemy catches sight of you, they'll dispatch reinforcements to your location. You're on your own out there. No backup. There's no place to run and no place to hide. That's why... You worry too much, Otacon. Believe me, I know what'll happen if I screw up. Okay, then. Just be extra careful and <laughs> stay out of sight. What a call. Okay. Rendezvous with the Mark II. I think we might be done for now until we hear the next battlefield ad. Okay, so the first one doesn't trigger the call. Rendezvous with okay. 
you say why touch the compress snake as a joke, but uh, later on when we get all the um, psyche related calls and stress management calls with Rose, she really does suggest looking at a beautiful scenery or nature or porn or uh, art. Uh, if you if you look at some of the porn, yeah, snakes um, psyche shoots up in this game, of course. Um, so it's not it's not complete nonsense. Uh, all right, let's go. Put on some music. Oh yeah, there is an iPod call. Come on. Maybe it's too early for it. Come on. It might be too early for it. Okay, fuck you. I think a lot of people would agree that Act 3 is when it drops the ball. <laughs> the so when there's some sort of fighting going on, some sort of explosion or gunfire, nearby it makes your camo index go up that's when it gets that blue color means you're getting a boost from the distractions nearby pretty much it can also go red you can lose 10% or gain 10% depending Point dick at new floor. Okay. Oh, they kill the guy instantly, okay. If you take too long, I guess he dies instantly, otherwise you can see him die slowly. Yeah, I took too long because these guys are... These guys would be the ones to uh, shoot him, but I already passed him. Copulation time. It's a new form of seek, you see. So we choked him this way, but if you keep choking him, he fucking dies. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> but you can either stun them or you can kill them if you do it long enough. Not funny. You okay? <laughs> nice timing. I thought I called for Kiefer with that knock. Do we copulate with this guy? Ah, fuck it. Let's just stun him. On extreme, you only get one star from the knife and two from CGC. But you can, you can add another. Um, fuck it, actually. Let's kill him. I might spend too much time in here. Just fucking around. Looking at... So we got the regain in here. Yeah, let's see if we can get that iPod call yet. Oh, it's definitely the um, Battlefield ads. Oh yep. Seriously, what's with all these ads? Oh, you mean Battlefield ads? 
Battlefield ads? Is that what they're called? On the street, anyway. It's what people are calling any ad having to do with the war economy. Privatizing the military has inevitably created intense competition for market share among PMCs and defense industries. Everybody wants to expand their market, get a bigger piece of the pie, so they're churning out truckloads of ads, exactly like the ones we see every day. Truckloads of ads, you say? You can just write off. It may seem that way, but the war economy is an enormous driving force in the world today. There are people whose livelihoods depend on those ads. Same goes for internet ads, TV commercials. The world's gone mad, and us with it. I know, but that's reality. Yeah, guys, there's people whose livelihood depends on those ads. <laughs> the world's gone mad. Yeah, Snake would not approve Twitch. The world has gone pretty mad, I guess. We're not too far off from the crazy MGS4 universe. Alright. Found compass and regain. And we have cigarettes and the iPod. These are all extremely well detailed items. If it weren't for like the resolution, and maybe a little bit of piss filter in this game, uh, I think they they really had some sort of insane attention to detail modeling items in this game. is is just crazy. In fact, I gotta I gotta try taking some screenshots on the emulator where you can crank it up to 1080p. Like. The items in this game are insanely detailed. Snake smokes the boss. <laughs> and with that also, of course, goes for um, the weapons. Arsenal gear reference and junker reference on the conference here. Regain being a real life energy drink in Japan. The lightning in the black and yellow can. Yeah. The only brain that can keep Snake going 24 hours a day. Plus I medicinal. <laughs> uh, they have this regain MGS4 commercial where old Snake turns into young Snake when he drinks it or something. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to look at some of these. If you haven't... Of course, like I was saying though, the guns are extremely detailed. Um, well, we'll come back to it, though, maybe when we meet Redman and shit. We don't have much right now. Fortunately, it's a little flat, but they, they got the, the classic follower in there. Nice. Ah, <laughs> gun details in Phantom Pain, okay. Come on, give me the iPod call. Maybe it has to be playing music. It's just equipped. Rendezvous with the I think just having it equipped should do it. Rendezvous. Why don't you talk about the iPod? Rendezvous. Maybe it really is later. Okay. It's not just about the guns being fake, but their operating mechanism and the calibers and the level of stopping power and penetration is just a complete fucking disaster. Rolling can help you dodge enemy attacks and get past small gaps and obstacles. Gave Snake a holster, but we couldn't possibly put a handgun in it. That wouldn't be sneaky enough. Hands up. Here comes a new exciting feature. And search 
enemies for items this way, which ends with that. Unfortunately, there's no more interrogations, but instead of... I think, actually, you can still scare them by aiming at their face. But it doesn't make them dance and give you an item or anything like that. Yeah, he still gets scared. But that's not how you get an item anymore. You have to physically search them. And they don't have anything. They, they will let you know. I think you have these nuts. Oh, he laughed too. Nice. Here is another extremely realistic weapon. <laughs> the porn magazine became a full fledged Playboy in this game. Specifically, hold on, double check. The issue from July 1999. It took me some time, but I found the exact issue of Playboy that made it into the game. So this is real too. Except, well, they changed the name of the articles in, in the cover. <laughs> it's pretty similar though. Yeah, if you look up Playboy, uh, July 1999, you will find this exact cover. <laughs> With different articles, of course, but it's close enough. Yeah. The world's top PMCs. Babes of the world's top PMCs. Hideo Kojima interviewed Games and Beyond. Kojima wishes it was interviewed by Playboy, I bet. I have no fucking idea why, but it is. Uh, the July 1999 one. Nano Boost or Nano Bus? The truth behind Nano Drone. Best FPSs of the year. Can you believe we used to pay for these things? And all the stuff that um, Eva talks about later. Uh, Seventh Circle. Sadistic joke becomes primetime sensation. Seventh Circle is um, one of the TV programs you see at the beginning. It's the the quiz show, I think. Unfortunately, the inside of the real life Playboy. Well, the cover is the same, but the article names are similar on on the cover. The inside is completely different. <laughs> they couldn't put actual titties in the game. You see, so that's close enough. You can look. Yeah, you can look. Let's well, no, let's stuff this guy in here. put it down here for the next guy. So if you look in first person when you put it down with circle you can flip through the pages. Notice how the snake is grunting every time we turn the page. If we were missing a little bit of or psyche here each page has like a set amount that it recovers sl slowly over time. <laughs> There's also a trick if you want to somehow preserve it. Instead of letting go of the buttons, you can pause and unequip it. That way, you can look at it without actually using it up, but that's okay. <laughs> We're not that desperate. Let's just leave it here. There's the guy here. Yeah, of course there's still new things. It would be pretty stupid to think we already know everything. <laughs> it's my lucky day. Um. 
weapon. Hold on, I'll join you. <laughs> that animation. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but... Man, that's enough fapping. <laughs> oh, it went away, I think. And just like an MGS2 or 3, they never wake up from inside a locker, so they're taken care of for good. Um, let's try for that iPod call again. Snake, the PMC oh, that's right, we pick up something, guns. so we get this call. Guns. See how the word locked appears in the weapon list? Yeah. ID guns are equipped with locks. As long as the lock is engaged, you can't pull the trigger. Any suggestions? The locks are only disengaged when they recognize the nanomachine ID inside a soldier's body. Anyone not possessing nanomachines keyed to the system, or anyone who's keyed but not authorized to use that weapon, won't be able to pass the ID guns verification process. So I can't use PMC guns? I'm afraid not. You're not registered with the system. And it's not just weapons either. Vehicles? Buildings, everything used for military purposes is secured with this ID control system. Without the proper IDs, it's impossible for PMCs or state armies to fight. Think of it as a soldier's dog tag, only at the nano level. So, I shouldn't even bother picking up ID guns. For now, at least. But they might come in handy later on. Eh... Yeah. We don't have driving yet, so it just says ID locked. Um, part of me kind of wants to do a new game, just to uh, find the weapons as we go. But the truth is, there's too many fucking weapons in this game. Look at some of the weapon details; it's better. Just do new game plus. Um, also on New Game Plus you get all the um, extra iPod music, which, oh yeah, we we're trying to get the fucking iPod call and it's not triggering. Rendezvous with the mar Maybe it really is after- I wanna say it's before though. I think I've done it before. Rendezvous. Finding the Mark II. Rendezvous. God damn it. I'm a backwards. Maybe if music has to be playing. Rendezvous with the Mark II. Nope. Rendezvous with the Mark II. Rendezvous. Ah, uh, don't worry. You can still suppress plenty of guns in this game. More than you'll ever need. But yeah, like a suppressed 57 would be OP as fuck. You can suppress the P90 at least. Let's wait for this guy. And then lure him up here. What was that noise? And then we flip him over the hole here, and dead. He died before he even hit the floor. <laughs> as soon as they are affected by gravity, enemies die mid-air in this game. <laughs> and that doesn't even count as a kill. I didn't kill him. Gravity did. Ah, something there. Ah, shit. Oh, come on. How is this the pattern for here? It's a little confused.
You go away. I guess we'll just wait for him to turn here. Then we got another little in play move here. That would have been cool to see in a certain other game, but whatever. You can lean over things and then flip over and jump down. If you need to aim at something directly underneath, you can do that. before these guys turn. Why are you in a tiny uh, robot? What? Otacon. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Snake. Allow me to introduce Metal Gear Mark II. Metal Gear. That's right. Just like Rex. But we also see a flashback of the actual Metal Gear Mark II. But this gear's not a weapon. Snatcher. It's a remote mobile terminal designed to provide you with operational support. Why does it have wheels? Where are you? I'm in the Nomad. Where else? I'll be watching you through the Mark II. Mm, wish I was good with gadgets. Hey, I'll be with you in spirit. Anyway, because you had to dress up as a militiaman, I had the Mark II bring you some goodies. Starting with this. Put it on your left eye. Looks like an eye patch. I call it the Solid Eye. It's an all-purpose goggle that displays radar images and other data in 3D. You can also switch it over to light amplifying night vision. The rebels are out there. It looks like they've got the government's PMC troops beat, at least in numbers. And this is their own turf. Snake. I know this is a sneaking mission, but you'll need to protect yourself. Maybe it doesn't matter. If it's his dominant eye, he doesn't need to close his other eye. There's a bunch of MVGs that are only a single tube. And here's a tranquilizer gun. Snake just dismisses the tranquilizer gun. It's like the most OP fucking thing in the world. And it's like, ooh, 445. It's getting tough these days finding decent guns that aren't controlled. Ah, yes. Here's a $4,000 gun. Okay. By the way, it sucks. <laughs> Follow you wherever you go, like this. I'll activate stealth so it doesn't attract any attention. If you need it, just bring up the start button menu. You got it. Snake, the informants who said they saw liquid here should be a little further up. Head for the rendezvous point. I've placed a mark on the radar in the upper right corner of the solid eye. It's a war zone out there. Stay on your toes. Okay, we got all this it's garbage kind of now. Storm, but I've sent you data on an alternate route. Follow the mark on your radar. But before we do anything, let's run outside with the Mark II, the mark II that has to fucking stretch for some reason. Okay. And if we take a look here, see the building in the background. We're about to see the drones here. Shoot it down. And it goes down in real time. That's the building 
that we're going through after you meet Revan. You're gonna go through that collapsed building. And it's really easy to, to miss because it happens almost right away here. Yeah, and then there's a call about it. That's that's how I noticed. That there's something as that Otacon's talking about. There's a call about the building going down like that. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? And then I realized it's there. Hey, I just wanted to show that real quick before we missed it. And now we got a whole bunch of Mark II related calls and stuff. And of course, let's snake using to control the Mark II. The PS3 controller. <laughs> Again, one of the most detailed items in the game. It's insane. DualShock 3, 6 axes, little USB port, and even the player 1 little light being on. And if we could look underneath, we could see the light gun sucks and the angle sucks, but I'm pretty sure they modeled uh, the label as well. It's on that side. It's unfortunate snakes thumbs don't actually move. You follow your, your moves, your inputs, because that would be fucking insane if they did that. It would be really fucking cool. But still, this PS3 controller is like one of the most fucking detailed things in the whole game. Like even the, like the D-pad isn't flat. Like, uh, maybe select and start are flat. Uh, and remember, this game had a bone to pick with other consoles, console wars back in the day. There's that trailer where Autocode says Snake. This will be the key to winning the console wars, talking about the, the cell processor. <laughs> so this is this is very much the uh, specialty made PS3 game with that in mind, using every ounce of it. Power of the cell. <laughs> the frame rate sucks and the resolution is less than 720p, but it's, it's not less than 720p, it's like 1024 by 768. It's like a different aspect ratio that gets somehow adapted into stretch 1080p. But other than that, yeah. <laughs> it was very much marketed that way. Even though they could have, if they wanted, made it work on other things. Like they did with Metal Gear Arcade. Uh, I think there's talk of um there was a test build the Metal Gear Arcade being um pretty much Windows version of MGO which basically is the same engine MGO2 and I think there were talks of like a test build possibly running on Xbox or Windows or something but they they never put it but there there's some people who think that's physically impossible it's it's not Uh, who knows what the future will bring if they ever do something with it? I'm just three. I mean, I'm just four. Has a bunch of um, licensed shit, including all this PS3 stuff. Like, who knows how they would handle it if they really were to re-release it one day? Who knows? Konami doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. I like, got oh, yeah, volume two. We don't know what games to put in it. <laughs> okay. Snake, you've got to rendezvous with our informants. Yeah. I created the Mark II to provide you with mission support. It's outfitted with a full suite of support functions. It can transport weapons and items, assess your condition, conduct recon, provide map data, and analyze the state of battle. You can also use its menu screen to adjust camouflage settings and change equipment. To access the menu screen, Press the start button. I've set the Mark II to shadow you at all times. It'll be there for you to call upon whenever and wherever you need it. Tell me something, Otacon. What possessed you to name it Metal Gear Mark II? 
I named it that so I'd never forget that I was the one who designed Rex. But the Mark II's no weapon of mass destruction. It's a remote mobile terminal designed solely to support you. I want to show the world that technology can work wonders when it's used the right way. I'll bet that 50 years from now, robot buddies like the Mark II will Look be at him looking up in the society. distance. <laughs> Even now, 30% of all snipers use robot spotters. Oracle's vision. I don't think it's quite what Asimov imagined, but we may already be living in the caves of steel. You've got these, usually it's just generic animations, but every once in a while in the codec there'll be these unique moments where they do something unique that's appropriate to what they're talking about. And Otacon's vision of all the robot buddies in the future. He looks off in the distance and <laughs> like that. Um. Let me give you a brief rundown on controlling the Mark II. No, I'm good. Snake, the weapons you pick up will be temporarily stored in your backpack. Okay. Those guys really know how to put there on a go. show. I'm sure it was old and decrepit already, but I've never seen a building go down like that. That's the call about the building. It's a pretty short one, but it can be really confusing if you don't know which building he's talking about. Uh, if we fuck around stealth cam a little bit, there should be a call about. Snake sounds a little jealous that the Mark II has stealth camo and he doesn't. <laughs> also, if we spin, if we go too fast and spin, you get this animation. <laughs> Don't forget, Snake. This is a battlefield. Conditions are changing all the time. Sometimes those conditions make it easier for you to lay low. Sometimes they make it harder. Always be on the lookout for the tides to turn. If you see an opening, grab it. For example, if the enemy is locked in battle, they won't be watching their backs. You might try sneaking behind them. So, since this game actually has different factions actively fighting in an active battlefield, their AI and stuff changes when they're distracted, engaged in combat. For example, I might fuck it up because it's a little complicated here, but if you happen to be running behind an enemy while they're engaged in combat, they will they will hear your footsteps, but they won't turn around for it. You can tell that they, they'll hear it. I guess instead of footsteps, we can do it with magazines. Maybe it's the same thing, but we can do it from a safe distance. Like, okay, that guy's engaged in combat, right? So his AI is different. If I make noise nearby, he doesn't completely turn around. You can still see that he hears it because it has the exclamation mark in his head, but he doesn't turn around for it. Well, maybe a little bit his head, but not completely, as if you were you were uh, actively sneaking around and nothing else going on. So that's just a little example of it. Let's see, we might be able to... This way you can... Yeah. You can make noise around them. And they're distracted, but they still hear it. They don't, they don't go investigate or anything. So there's these di different degrees of awareness that the enemies have because there's actual shit going on in the world go figure in front of the player even During manual control the mark II maintains a wireless link with you but the control signal range is deliberately kept short by an attenuator on the transmitter circuit the distance varies by environment so i can't give you an exact figure but even under the best conditions it can't exceed 50 meters 50 meters that's pretty short why impose a limit like that? Seems more useful if I could control it from further away. Of course, I need plenty of signal when I control it. But in your case, you have to be conscious of the danger from DF. 
You can't risk using a high-power electrical signal for too long. It's like holding up a big sign saying, Hey, I'm over here! So try and keep the Mark II close to you when you use it. Keep that in mind, and the Mark II should serve you well. Alright, like Otto can say, there's a limit to it, so... Hold on, I'm a robot, I must stretch before we can move. <laughs> that is so fucking annoying, but I see why they did it, just to limit. Not all the time, though. If you go too far, start losing signal. Oh shit, that actually triggers the vehicle to come nice. <laughs> But this battle here is a stalemate until we do something about it. They just keep spawning. There's also a call about that, how you can influence the outcome of a battle. You're about to send the Mark II out of range. Watch out! I wonder if he has another line about it. Maybe not. You just go this way. Yeah. Okay. The real interesting thing, though, is when you abuse the Mark II. <laughs> We're gonna go get caught with the Mark II. Hello. Sir? Huh? Poor Mark II. <laughs> Snake, you've got to be more careful with the Mark II. It's gonna break if it keeps taking damage like that. Snake, I know the Mark II is just a mobile terminal made to support you and all, but that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want with it. Do me a favor, will you? The next time you consider sending the Mark II out to get shot to pieces, <laughs> don't! What are you gonna do, Otacon? Are you gonna beat me up? Alright, let's do it again. Let's piss him off. Other now the Mark II is weak and slow and hurt. <laughs> Edge. <laughs> Mark two abuse. This is where Otacon starts mumbling to himself. He's really pissed. Uh, I can't believe you're so abusive on Mark two. Otacon. All the time I put into this technology. Ugh. Otacon. Are you angry? Would you just it's like, it's like there's nothing but your son. It's the only thing you think about. <laughs> uh, look, I'm sorry. I promise I'll be more careful about how I use the thing. Yeah, well, you better. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. I think that's that's it, though. He doesn't get any angrier than that. It just repeats that call. Oh, look, it's fine now. Hello? I said hello. Oh. <laughs> Why are you gonna kick it? The Mark II can't take much more abuse. I think he's just gonna say that again. Let's double check though. The stress going off from the alert of the Mark II getting spotted. Uh, I can't believe you're so abusive of Mark II. Otacon. All the time I put into this technology. Ugh. 
Autocon. Are you angry? Would you just it's like, it's like there's nothing but yourself. It's the only thing you think about. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I promise I'll be more careful about how I use the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you better. Uh, good morning. Okay. Snake, this should go without saying, but just so we're clear, you're practically defenseless while controlling the Mark II. So if you're going to use it, you should do it from some place you're not likely to be found. Right now, the militia and PMCs are at a stalemate, and just about the whole area is lit up with gunfire. Things are dangerous there, even for a guy like you. But if you could somehow tip the balance... Uh, I might be able to divert the hotspot elsewhere. Bingo! I'll bet you could shape battlefield conditions to make sneaking easier. Maybe by destroying a key weapon that one side relies on. No. Really? There's actual engagements? And factions and key strategic... Points in the battlefield to influence the outcome of things. Damn. This long lost technology. <laughs> Wonder where it'll go. Wonder what it'll think of next. God damn. It's unfucking believable. Anyway, these guys will keep respawning forever until we do something about it. This guy's freaking out here. Foaming at the mouth. Oh shit, they're hostile right now. Okay, hold on, I gotta take down more PMCs. Oh yeah, now they're neutral. One was enough. Damn it, me. We're not playing this for the snake cakes. Get bonked. <laughs> Once we put all these BMCs to sleep. It still won't do much until we take out the vehicle. So if you if you were a new game, you didn't have anything else. There's an RPG here for that. Right now we're a new game plus, so we have a fuck ton of weapons we could do it with. But just in case, here's the RPG. Here's the RPG. There's another cool little gameplay move, by the way, simply being able to get on your fucking back and aim and even aim throwable things the other way, overhead. <laughs> wow, long lost technology, these controls. Alright, uh, anyway. Now that we're behind here. If you worry about kills, this doesn't count as a kill. There's there's nobody in there, I don't know. It's like AI control. <laughs> but when we destroy the first vehicle, that shifts the uh, focus of the battle a little forward. Now these these rebel guys will advance. Unless I forgot a PMC somewhere. Oh, over there. Okay. I 
Okay, now they should advance. So if you take out the vehicle and the PMCs here, the battle shifts. I don't know what, where the fuck this guy's going with no gun, but okay. What is he doing? He's going in the front line. But not with his fists. And now he's freaking out. I don't know what you expected. And now he's getting grenaded. Oh shit. <laughs> but now it's shifted here. <laughs> so if we just wanted to get past there, it would be easier now. But um, we can also put the things here. <laughs> There's another vehicle there. And if we look for some stairs around here, there we go. Oh, really? They saw me from there? Okay. I swear they only used the animation once. Snake balances on the wooden beam like once in the whole game. This is where you'd find your other RPG to do this. And then from here even we can get the other vehicle. That pretty much Ends the battle. Oh, it was you. Oh, I'll go over that, I see, don't worry. Okay, so the now the battle's completely over and these guys really like me, so now their names are blue. I can even punch this guy in the face. Yeah, he's okay with it. So they start out red. That's hostile, and then they turn, their name turns yellow, kind of like this piss yellow that you see everywhere in the interface. And then, if they really like you, it turns blue, so you've got a little bit of a faction and reputation point system going on. And no matter what, the PMCs are always red, always hostile, although I think originally the idea was to snake to be able to like ally with pmcs as well but you can only really ally with with uh, the rebels in act one and two unfortunately uh that would have been interesting to see what it would have looked like if pmcs liked you yeah. so it starts out red and to make him go neutral or yellow you just take down some pmcs and then you can Either, you know, take out more PMCs and end the battle to turn them blue. Or, I think you were talking about the colors of their emotions. Right now I'm talking about the color of their names. Um, and then you can also... Uh, let's see what we have. Noodles and shit. Hey. Yeah, you can give them items at first. What? What happened? They won't give you anything back. Because we just don't have enough reputation points. <laughs> it's kind of a hidden stat. But if you keep giving them shit, eventually. There you go. Now he's giving me something back. And. Holy shit, was well, MGS4 already affected by the Red Cross nonsense thing? No way. Maybe it's just green for other reasons I don't know it's not even green it's like a green background ah uh, that just surprised me that's green or a green background <laughs> uh what is that is that Benjamin no oh I guess it looks what the fuck is that is it the compress oh, no what is it Oh, it is, okay. Oh, so it just looks different. Okay, it's like a little case for it. Because then it looks like this. I would have been cool to have this actual arsenal thing. 
in out in the world as well when you pick it up, but whatever. Um So eventually when you when you max out kinda of like the reputation with them, you can even punch them or you can even kill a couple and they still don't man don't don't mind. <laughs> If you keep doing it though, like, it just goes down. Eventually they'll go back to neutral and then hostile. But giving them items like this is the only way you can get some of the iPod music in this game. Right now we have all of them. Hey, I gave you those noodles. You just gave me the noodles back. Right now we have all the iPod music in this New Game Plus save, so we're not getting any. But on a new game where you don't have them, this is how you would get some, some of the music. Thanks. Yours. <laughs> Whips out a huge ass fucking ammo RPG case. <laughs> nice. And then perhaps the best feature in all of this. Here. If you pause and remove the item from your inventory as you're giving it to them, you can throw Fuck them. You, asshole! What? <laughs> What's gotten into you? Yeah. Okay, okay, for real. You want a ration? Come on, don't come, don't be like that. Here. Don't have to Just kidding. What? What's gotten into you? And the other guy's better. This guy over here is my favorite. The dude is with. I need some other healing item. Yeah, you can just straight up fold them. Let me clean this shit up. There's just too much shit that I don't need. Uh, let's see. Uh, iPod, cigarettes, healing items. You can carry nine healing items, three of each on extreme, which is crazy. Um. I guess the skull die, the shit barrel. Uh, that'll do for now. Syringe is a spoiler, we shouldn't have that yet. Hey, you want a ration? So that's where you were. Here. Hey. Nope. Just kidding. What? Fuck you, What's asshole! Very appropriate, but I wanted to. I wanted you guys to listen for the actual line that he said. Good job. Here. Hey. <laughs> if you listen carefully, this guy almost drops the first F bomb in MGS4 before laughing octopus. What? What the? F what the? F almost. You can clearly hear hear it. <laughs> um so the callers next to their names are the emotion that these guys are kinda predisposed to. And you can tell how much of it is filled by how much of the the square icon is filled. Eventually, when it's when it's full, it turns into the full icon. Since we're a new game plus, we have the emotion ammo here for the tranquilizer. So, special bullet that simulates, stimulates, not simulates. Laughter, rage, crying, and screaming. So these are the colors associated with each emotion, and so everybody has kind of like an innate emotion that they're predisposed to. But you can also change it, and you can change it in a bunch of ways. Actually, you can change it with the, with the tranquilizer rounds. You can change it with camos and CQC, and you can change it with magazines, and you can change it with maybe some iPod music as well. I don't remember. There's a whole of bunch of different ways to do it. Um, but if you don't fuck with that, if you just go with whatever emotion they already have, uh, it fills up slowly as battlefield actions happen. So they get shot, or they shoot somebody, or uh, they get CQC'd, or anything like that. As battlefield things happen to them, their emotions slowly fill up. That's why 
you can see like that, that guy that was freaking out in the middle of the battlefield when he when you get when you get hit or something like that his emotion build up that way um as for what snake can do you can simply grab him and see you see and that'll make him it's harmless but it will make the emotion thing go up you know it's a little more orange than before I'm gonna grab him a few more times. What are you trying to now it's almost full. Damn it. If I grab him maybe once or twice, or it should change to the full icon. The rage icon. There you go. Yeah. If we had enemies around, uh, the rage emotion makes them basically just fucking mag dump into them. There's no enemies right now, so he's not doing shit, but if there was an enemy, he would mag dump. Like, they, they, they just shoot much more aggressively when they're raging like this, if there's an enemy. And no matter the emotion, after a while, they pass out. <laughs> and they start foaming at the mouth. And then the beater goes back whatever it was and you can wake up you good damn it just leave the gun there don't worry about it the rage is not too useful I think this guy is lap yeah see how it's yellow it's just slightly yellow there the yellow is laugh so we grab him a few times to go up you mind explaining Damn it! more. Hey! Uh, one more maybe. You mind explaining? Ah, uh, come on. This should be really close. There you go. What laughing does, actually, it makes them attack friendlies. He's shooting in that guy's direction. <laughs> They don't attack Snake, they just still attack each other. He's going for it. He's gonna fuck him up. But, uh, might be time to pass out soon, so maybe he won't make it. Yeah. <laughs> he tried. The emotion ammo is New Game Plus, but the emotions are there on New Game, and there's other ways you can manipulate them other than the ammo. You can use, these are DLC camos, but um, you can also technically use these. Laughing, raging, crying, screaming camo. Uh, these are... It's not when you... Is it when you see you see them or when you get spotted? I think it was when you, something like that. I forget. It's either when you see you see them, when you grab them, it changes their emotion. Or when you get spotted, it changes their emotion. I forget which one it is. I think it might be see you see. Let's, let's test it. Okay, let's put on the crying camo. And grab this okay. raging guy. Oh, it was you. oh, no, it's when they spot you. See how it changed to blue when he spotted me? Yep, it changes to almost, almost full when they spot you with it. That's like one little hit away. So crying and and um, screaming, crying is just sad and screaming is basically fear. Both of those completely disable the enemy. So laughing makes them shoot friendlies, raging makes them shoot more aggressively at enemies, but crying and screaming is just completely disabling them. They they can't alert, they can't attack, they can't do anything. They just freak out a little bit and then pass out. So actually, oh yeah, the other way you can change the emotions, the really OP one actually, is the smoke grenades. You got a bunch of smoke grenades with um, associated colors and emotions. So you got smoke grenades, camos, tranquilizer rounds, and the magazine, the emotion magazine. Which, based on which page you turn the magazine to, you know, with the, the Beauty and the Beast unit, <laughs> it will give him the correspond corresponding emotion as well. On New Game Plus, you only get the Beast magazine. You only see them. I mean, sorry, on New Game, you only get the Beast's 
on the cover and the pages. But on New Game Plus, you get the, the, the beauties, the models. But it's the same effect. Uh, so now if I punch this guy, he's just gonna start crying and pass out. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's really mean. <laughs> Sag. Okay, so these cameras are not very OP because... Okay, they don't completely fill out the meter. They put them one hit away. One little interaction away from triggering the actual emotion when they spot you. <laughs> this guy already spotted me what it is, so... Hey, hey, give me your lunch money! <laughs> That's funny as fuck, because he can trigger the emotion in one punch now. Let's change it to scream. Ah, fuck. Yeah, I think... Uh, we'll check that actually. I think it's it might change back. Yeah, it changes back. They each have their own innate emotion. Yeah This guy's also raging as soon as he spots me it will go to screaming so that's where you were. Minus one hit very very close to full screaming. So now snake is a bully <laughs> Actually, that's very similar that's very similar to what the um, the big boss face camel does. Well, we don't have it yet. Except that one makes him scream immediately. It's not one hit away. But you know what? That means if it's just one little hit away, if I equip a suppressed handgun, even if it's a lethal gun, the problem is oh, they have to fucking spot you, so that kind of defeats the purpose of trying to sneak around. If we were to do it with an enemy. If... If you get spotted from a distance... Does that mean if I shoot him once... Okay, you have to be pretty close for it to fill up. Let's see, when he turns around, maybe... That should also do it. So that means you can still kind of trigger it remotely. That might be useful for like the frogs and shit. Yeah. Forced fights. Come on, look at me. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you can trigger it from the distance with one little gunshot. That's interesting. And then... Oh yeah, he definitely went back to rage now. Now it doesn't strictly apply emotion to the attacks. It applies the emotion to you when you get spotted. But the attack is what makes that emotion move forward to its full face. That's not strictly the attack itself. Once they have that emotion, any attack will will um, advance the emotion meter, I guess. But even if you don't have any special gear to change emotions around, each enemy already has an emotion that they'll, they'll go with. So technically, yeah, all your attacks have emotions already, but that's that's besides the, the gear. Uh, let's fuck around with. Uh, the magazines now. Yeah, you gotta look at him with the, the solid eye. In fact, there is a call with Otacon about how the solid eye can tell emotions. Okay. But if I open this magazine on... Okay, Raging Raven, he's in a rage. Crying Wolf, he's gonna cry. There's even the, the callers there. Let's let's put on Laughing Octopus. 
Then when he spots this, his emotion will definitely change to yellow. Nice. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice, it gives him the full thing. You don't need to hit him or anything. And he fucking ate it. It consumes a magazine, I guess. <laughs> oh my god, I shot this guy in the leg and now he's doing a swag walk. <laughs> this is me giving a fuck. <laughs> so that's where you were. Uh, that's right, we shot him in the fucking leg. <laughs> hey, what's up? You want some rage? How about a nice cup of rage? Oh, it's still green from the camo, though, so maybe it doesn't go back. But Rage was this guy's original emotion, I think. He might be healed after he wakes up from this. I don't know. Alright. And then... I don't think he heals if you give him a ration, though. Let's try. Hey, hurry up and pass out already. Damn it. Get up. Oh, it's you. Here. Here. Hey, thanks. Yeah, he <laughs> doesn't use it. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go. Uh, uh, let's get that call about uh, how the solid eye can see emotions. It'll be about now, anyway. I see you found yourself an operator uniform. As long as you're wearing it, you can do what you need to do, and the militiamen won't suspect a thing. It'll be a useful tool in certain situations. But be careful. Hurt a fellow militiaman while wearing the uniform, and you'll blow your cover. Got it? Head for the building where our informants are waiting. Ah, uh, we gotta close and reopen. Oh, the health bar is full now. You're right. But he's still fucking crippled. Maybe he's just the boss around here. He's doing the swag walk. Oh, I didn't notice. The health bar. Holy shit, they do use those rations. I never noticed that. See, I just fucking learned something new. Okay, let me, um, slash him up a little bit. You good, bro? Okay. <laughs> yeah, look at that health bar. Here, just what I need. Oh, it went up, just not all the way. It goes up a little bit. Oh wow, you could. I I didn't fucking know. I guess it makes sense though. You can heal them. A little bit. Here. It's hard to Just see because you don't have the fucking solid eye equipped if you if you're gonna give him the ration. <laughs> that means you have the ration equipped. Nice, nice. But they're still crippled. <laughs> now the that voice line is reused a bunch of times. It's not associated with him being hurt. It's just one of the few voice sets that they have. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah, see, I learned something new. Their fucking health bars actually go up. And look at this guy walking around like he owns the place. <laughs> Otacon, you gave the Mark II stealth capability? Yeah. The Mark II doesn't have to worry about damage from EM waves because it's a machine. And its surface area is small enough that cost isn't a problem. The trade-off being that it can be easily spotted by heat-seeking unmanned weapons. Keep that in mind, okay? Head for the building. Eh, he's not gonna tell me anything until I close and reopen. The device you're wearing over your left ah, eye you is the solid eye. 3D glasses, huh? 
I remember having a toy pair called Tobit Acid back when I was a kid. Tobit Acid? Um, okay. Never heard of it. The Solid Eye is a multi-purpose goggle equipped with a variety of functions. It has the same night vision capabilities as ENVGs, as well as a monocular function. It can also display a wide range of data as called for by the situation at hand. It's capable of using visual cues to pull up target data on any soldiers or weapons within its field of vision. Say, for instance, the target is a soldier. The solid eye will display the soldier's physical and emotional state based on body temperature, heart rate, and even sweat secretion. You can toggle the solid eye's functions in the item window. So that's how the solid eye gets a reading on their emotions. There's more about it with Rose later. Snake. The solid eye's night vision mode can give you a clear view of foot. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay, now we need to close it again. Yep. Otherwise, he just tells you where to go. I designed your radar exactly to your specifications, Snake. The baseline map, shown in the upper right of the screen, shows a visual representation of what your senses tell you, including sense you're not even conscious of. It compiles and amplifies data on surrounding temperature, humidity, sounds, and smells. Think of it as a digital expression of the feel of your environment. The feel? You mean my close range senses? That's one way of putting it, yeah. The, the stronger a feel is, the more vividly it shows up on the radar. But if you're somewhere with a high baseline, in the middle of a combat zone, say, or a panicking crowd, it's tougher to pick up that feel. Granted, you tend to stick out more when it's quiet around you, and it's easier to slip by unnoticed in a commotion, but it also makes you less alert to threats. Living organisms, such as soldiers and moving objects like unmanned weapons, give off strong feels, so they'll show up clearly on your radar. The radar also displays the strength of the ripples you yourself send out to others. The more you stick out, the bigger and brighter your radar presence will be. On the other hand, keeping quiet, staying still, and using Octocamo to blend in with the environment makes your radar presence smaller, indicating that you're less likely to be detected by the enemy. Honestly, though, useful features of the Solid Eye, mostly, to see if rebels are hostile or not in Act 1 and 2. Depending on what you do, so you know if you need a disguise or if you need to take down some PMCs first, so you can see when it changes. It's also pretty useful because it highlights um, items. Like there's a ration there, so it's easier to see that way. Uh, the MVGs are extremely useful in certain areas. Also makes the the frame rate shoot up. And we get the Octocamo, the MVG signature goes away. No matter what camo you have, just any camo pattern will make it go away. That's not, that's not terrible. And then we can see... Oh shit, I disarmed these guys, but... <laughs> you'll be able to see what weapon they have, the distance they're at, their health and stamina. It says none because there's, there's no weapons. I can't get over this guy's wall. Alright, let's go break off the dick. Alright guys, I'm about to play with my dick on stream. Oh. Hey, if you do this when there's guards around. <laughs> If you do it three times, it breaks off and you can get spotted if there's enemies around. Alright, playing with my dick now. Here we go. <laughs> Where'd it go? What was that sound? It's these nuts. Quite literally. That's nah, just a dick, I think. You got a nice shiny statue camo. I think 
think is it actually called? Because you can also save these patterns. Yeah, statue camera. There's a few available slots for them. Oh, that's kind of useless. There's there's a few cool, unique looking ones that you might want to save. And then to get rid of it, you can shake your controller. The actual only use, other than Screaming Mantis, I guess. The best function of the, the motion controls is getting rid of your camo. Just shake the controller for it. Um, one last thing in here, it's, it's one of the few areas where it actually works. Once you have a big, wide, open area, like this here, and especially if there's enemies or at least bodies, we have a little silly weapon for it Nagashima flintlock near mythical flintlock gun massive work of a Japanese gunsmith it is said that when fire in a certain place there is a chance that the divine wind will blow ah so you need a big wide open area like this there's a few spots where it works and with some luck, yep. All those fucking item sound effects are all items, ammo, rations spawning there. If a dead body or an enemy gets caught in the, in the divine wind, it gives you a fuck ton of items. <laughs> So if you ever want more more rations to give these guys or something, that's that's how you would get them. And I think it's like thirty three percent chance per shot or something, and then you have the whole ass reload animation for the the flint look. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the, the chicken run, you want to use all those fucking rations. Alright, I think that's about everything. Let's move on to the next area and to the next streamer. We got three dog at the ready. Nice. It's pretty dark in there. No, it isn't. Shut up. Nice, I think we sort of caught up a little bit. I remember switching here with Dog before. <laughs> we had a little bit of a delay, but I'm just doing three, but we're kind of on track now. Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Oh wait, hold on a second. I need to give this fucking save to three dog. <laughs> before we do anything. I was about to fucking take it down already. Unfortunately, you can't quite do it that fast yet. Clearly, when we move in together, Three Dog will be able to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Not delete this. I'm just three save from the USB drive so he doesn't get confused. And let's see. This one, yeah. All right. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let those other EMC commercials play while we give this a three dog.
but to play the PMC commercials, you just let the time run out on the start menus here. And then sneak on the lives himself, kind of, on heroes. And then it cuts to the PMC commercials. It's too good. I kind of wish it would play the other TV programs as well, but unfortunately it doesn't. I think I let it run a little bit and a few times and it just plays the PMC commercials. Not like the cooking show, the, the, the quiz show, the documentary, the interview with Hater. And unfortunately, I, I don't think it plays those, but that's okay. Maybe we'll get the Booba PMC. That would actually make for an excellent prediction. Like a four-way prediction. What what PMC commercial are we getting? <laughs> I don't think you can change through them. Maybe you can. But maybe it takes it back to the menu if you input anything. I don't know. built in Gamba and then just for enable channel points without telling three dogs. I can't do that. We don't have actual Access to each other's Twitch accounts. That was a pain in the ass when it used to be that way. There's there's other ways to, to stream without fucking up your channel settings and password and all that. Ah, we got the, the Mark 23 commercial. It's not an actual Mark 23 commercial, but that's what they're using. Imagine an HK commercial like this, Mark 23 commercial. Never a shot in the dark. I guess that's the Raven PMC. Okay. Oh fuck! And then it it goes back to this. Um, I thought it would play all of those in a row. Ah, I see. Okay, so it only plays one of them. Uh, right now we are. I know that doesn't look like it, but we are in the process of switching streamers. <laughs> I could also, here's a life hack, start a new game to get the fucking thing playing. <laughs> yeah, we're just waiting. There you go, hater interview. Who is David Hater? If you just citizen of the world. Yeah, well I never Oh yeah, who cares about hater? Let's show Kojima. Kojima. Shows up on the right side of the screen here when the camera changes at some point. He's just standing there like a cardboard cutout. You gotta be good to your body, you know? Loyal to your body. The people you're cooking. There he is. <laughs> See Kojima making the food analogy. 
this guy's wife was mad because he hadn't made the meal sooner. Just like everybody was mad at Kojima for not making MGS4 sooner. <laughs> Alright, that's your, your Easter egg that I'm uh, leaving you with because Three Dog is ready. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stream will go down for a second. And we'll be right back where we left off at the Militia Safe House. Three Dog. And yeah, Stream will be back in like 10 seconds or so. Don't go anywhere. Hope you guys enjoyed my am just four segment. I'll probably be back for the end of it or maybe Peace Walker beginning. All right, see you guys. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back soon. <laughs>